Arts. And we have the honor of having uh, Danielle and Carmi joining us from John Bede. We are super excited. They've been teaching um, several different classes here online and it's just a fun way to learn something new and, and you know, pick up some different tips and tricks. So this is an intermediate class. Um, so it's a, basically a beginner skill with an extra little extra step in there. So one of the things that we have learned from previous classes is that this is a perfect opportunity for you to kind of watch and learn and, and ask lots of questions. It'll be hard for you to probably keep up with us um, since the class will be moving pretty quick. So use this opportunity to ask Danielle as many questions as you possibly can. We are going to have the video on, we are video recording the, um, the class and you can watch it back tomorrow's on michaels.com slash classes. Uh, we are going to have the sound on mute so that way we can make sure we hear Danielle. So add your questions to the chat bar on the side and uh, Carmi and myself will take care of funneling those questions over to, to Danielle to make sure we get everybody's answers. So in the meantime, I wanted to introduce you to Danielle and please enjoy the class. Hi, nice to meet everyone and thank you to everybody for joining us tonight. And if you're returning, thanks for coming back for another class. Um, so um, tonight we're going to be making um, a really fun design and it can be made as a, a long necklace or as a bracelet, but it's a, um, a spiral stitch that is done on beading wire. Um, you put the beads onto the beading wire and then you stitch through them with beading thread to make this really fun design. And it's got a lot of versatility. Um, you can make it with different size beads. Here's one made with size two, sixes and eights. So two are those really big pony beads and it's on one millimeter leather cord. So lots of, lots of things you can do. And so we'll have some fun creating tonight. And, um, if everybody's ready to get started, I'll switch my camera. I think we're ready, Danielle. There are lots of visitors. I'm seeing Las Vegas and Colorado and South Carolina. Oh, wow. so, yes. That's, That's awesome. awesome. Yes. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to start with the beading thread today. So I'm working on um, a bracelet length so that it'll be easier for me to stay in camera and for you guys to see, and I'll be working with a shorter thread. Um, if everyone has uh, the PDF, um, I thought I would just go through it really quick to show you, you know, step by step what we'll be doing. So the, um, is this upside down for everyone if I go like this? The other way. <laughs> the no, other way? Upside down. This is right. Yes. Okay. So this design starts with a, a strand of beading wire and a crimp on the end around a jump ring. Then you load size six seed beads uh, to the length that you'd like your bracelet or necklace to be. And then you can either use a bead stopper or some scotch tape on the end, on the tail here, to help keep the beads from falling off on that side. And at that point we bring out beading wire and stitch inward toward the crimp bead, leaving about a 10 inch tail that we'll weave in later and picking up three size 10 seed beads and one size eight and three size 10s. And so over here. <laughs> so then we go back through um, two of the six O's and heading in this direction, add that same combination again. And you come back down, and this is where I'm straying a little bit from regular spiral stitch. You come over here and go up this arm again, and then exit the eight and go into the other eight. And what that does is it locks it in place so that you get that really fun spiral. Look where it, it's, it, it's connected the whole way around and it basically just rolls without moving. And that, so that's how that's done, just by connecting the two eights. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. And 
So it can be, of course, any length that you'd like it to be. I'm gonna start with a shorter one. We'll need some crimp beads. If anyone is missing the PDF, we're posting it over in the, the, in the chat section. So go ahead and open that up and you can see the, the document to download. Oh, thank you. Yes, thank you so much. Okay, and so this is just a two by two crimp. I'm putting a jump ring on there. and bringing the tail through the crimp bead. And Danielle, for people who are just tuning in maybe for the first time, the bead along classes have demonstrated this crimping technique a couple of times now. So if yeah. they watch those classes, they'll get a more in-depth demo on how to do a crimping bead. Yeah, the, I watched the, both of the classes so far. They've been really good. I learned some things <laughs> that I did not know about beading wire. And um, so this is the beetle on crimp tool. And I'm just showing you guys the basic crimp step that um, there's a lot more detail on the video that you can watch um, that Carmi mentioned from beetle on. But there we go. And so size 60 beads. Um, These out. I'm, I'm trying to use colors that are solid and easier to see tonight for you guys. Hopefully it will show up really well. And so there's no set number. You can just string on as many as you think you might need. You can always test the length too if you're making a bracelet for example or a necklace. Just test the length once you have it made or strung I mean. And I always tuck the tail. That's what I was doing there. I'm tucking the beading wire tail in there. I'm not going to string too many, just, just enough. And if you decide at the end you want to add more, you can add more right at the end if you want to as you're working up. If you decide, oh, I need it to be a little longer, throw some more beads on there. That's doable with this design. All right, so now I'm bringing out the tens and the eights. Over here. There's my eights. And there's the tens. And the wildfire. This is the point zero zero six. And so depending on the design you're making, 36 inches is a good start. You'll probably have to add thread, especially if you're doing something bigger than a bracelet, you'll certainly add thread then. Okay. And these are size 10 hard beading needles. And there's this, um, I'm not trick to getting it threaded. As you just kind of flatten with your fingernail, this thread is really good at shaping. And that will make it easier to fit through the eye of the needle here. There we go. Okay, I don't have a bead stopper with me. I do. Okay. So I'm putting the bead stopper just maybe like right there. And um, in case you missed it at the beginning, a scotch tape would be fine or uh, like washi tape would also work really well. Okay, so to start, each of the spiral arms is going to loop around three beads. And so to start, I'm going to go down through three beads. I'm leaving a tail that's about you know, seven inches long or so, seven to 10 inches. So we're just gonna weave that in at the end. Um, picking up three size, 10 seed beads, one size eight, three size tens. Okay, going back in the same direction as the crimp bead, just go through two. And I'll show you in a second why we only go through two. Okay, 
There we go. Okay, so now we're going to do that again. Pick up three size tens, one eight, three size tens. And now we're going to push one bead down and go through all four of the beads here. And if it slides off of the crimp there, don't worry about that. You can always move it back down. Okay, so now my thread's exiting from that first 6 out bead. And I've got to get outside of that jump ring there. Sorry about that. Okay, so go up through. Now we're going through the first arm we made. Exiting from that bottom 6, and then going up these first 3 size 10s and the size 8 bead. Okay, and pull tight. Now skip over and go into the 8 on the other arm and continue through the 10s above it. Okay. And so from here, we're just going to turn and go through two beads. And so that's the pattern. It's you go down through two, move one down, add another arm, by coming up through the bead you just slid down and continue down through the next three beads. So that's through a total of four. And it looks like I did, I did catch something here. Sorry about that. Oh, he's just a little loose. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to continue down through one more. Oops, sorry guys. I wasn't supposed to add those beads yet. That's why it's not working. I jumped ahead. It's good to know you can back stitch and get out. <laughs> yeah. I was supposed to go down those four beads before I added that arm. But I, uh, I didn't do that. There we go. Okay. Now fin finishing that part. <laughs> Let's see. There you go. Now down through the four. And I can do that again if it was, if a, you know, that little, that mistake may have confused some people. So I can restart that. What do you think? Should I pull these guys off and start again? No, I, I, I think it's understood and it's really well illustrated in the PDF. Gotcha. Okay. Well, then I'll just continue a few more rows and you can just get the idea of the pattern. Okay, so I'm just going back up and connecting those eights again. I went up through the, the last arm and then moved to the eight that's in the new arm. And now I'm going to turn and go down through these two here. So you're always going through two beads. Yeah, before you add a new arm, you come down through two. Then you slide a new bead down because each arm is going to cover three of the sixes. So now the new arm will cover these guys. And then we want to have our thread positioned to 
go back up to the last one we added. So that's why we go down four after that. And then we'll turn and go through that eight and then there'll be a new arm here to go up through. And so now I'm in that spot to add another one. Danielle, you're picking up those beads really easily because you're working on a mat, a bead mat. Yeah, I like these mats. I'm going back through four. And at this point, I've been um, kind of dodging this tail here for a while. Now that I've got three to four arms on, I'm going to weave that one in. It'd be a good segue into, how do you add thread? I can show that. There we go. So up that arm and through that eight. Crossing over, going through this one. Pull tight and then go down two beads. Okay, so for if you're adding thread, um, you'll probably want to do so from a position where you've just completed a stitch. So this is a good spot to do that where you've come down through two and you're about to start a new arm. And so weaving in the old thread is the same process as weaving in the new thread. You just kind of bring a stitch down because our, our thread path is going down and up, down and up. So you'll bring your thread down, weave through an arm, go back down, weave up through another arm, and then go ahead and turn around so that you're exiting the same place as your current working thread. And then build a few rows and then bring the working thread, the old working thread up into that and trim it. But so here now, Danielle, you're doing yep. awesome for time. So I think um, anyone who was here from the beginning gets the gist of it, but I, I, I think you have enough time to start over from yep. the okay. beginning. Yeah, I'd like to because I had that one where I added the beads before I was supposed to. So that yeah. sounds like a good idea. And it's new for a lot of people. And once you start it and do two or three, then you're off to the races. So I think getting them set up with a great start will, will okay. allow them to make it as long as they like. That sounds great. Okay, so I'm going to bring the um, beading wire back. So this is just um, 49 strand, nice strong stuff. I like it. Okay, and I'm using um, the crimp beads, number two crimp beads. And this is the um, basic crimper. Okay, and I'll just need to grab another jump ring really quick. I've got them here. And, um, and Carmi mentioned earlier that there is a very good tutorial on, on what I'm doing here with the crimps. That was done by Meredith from Beat Along. And it's available in the replays, the video replays. But what I'm doing here is making sure that they're not crossing each other under the crimp. And I'm just going to crimp really quick. Turning and closing the crimp. And that's it. 
I'm going to use these flush cutters and earlier that tail was really getting in the way so I'm going to remove this tail here. Okay. All right, so this is one of those designs you can make um, for any length that you'd like. You can make an anklet, a bracelet, a necklace, even just like a short length um, that you can put on, on leather. So anything that you'd like to try, especially if, um, you know, if you're making this for the first time, a bracelet might be the way to go, just because it is a, it's a time commitment design, I would say. But I'm going to go ahead and just string a few so I can demonstrate how to start it. And these are size 6 seed beads. Actually, I was just thinking I should bring, bring these out so you guys can see what they, what they are. Here's the 10s. Here's the 8s. I don't know if you guys can see that, actually. We can. We can. Just at the very okay. top. Oh, okay, great. Okay. Leave those there. Danielle, while you're adding the six O's to your bead wire, I just mm -hmm. want to point out to everybody that you're actually working with uh, John Bead Check Beads. Um, check beads are beautiful beads to work with because of their quality and their consistency. So you really have an opportunity to string something where the beads um, line up properly and they look tidy. They're just really beautiful beads to work with. I love the colors. There's, there's just so many. And this design is fun because you can make it in any colors you'd like. And it, it's one of those ones where you just want to keep making more and different colors to see. It's a great gift, I think. Okay, so I just started with a short length here. And I'm gonna go over and get some beading wire. The, um, sorry, beading thread. I'm using the 0.6 wildfire. And this wildfire is, um, it's really, it's really good. It's strong, I like it. Um, I'm borrowing the thread off of my other one here. Okay. So I've got um, I've got a short working length, but a good working length to cut at home would be about 36 inches. And to thread your needle, flatten the end. There we go. Okay, so leaving about a seven, seven to ten inch tail that we'll weave in later, go ahead and bring your needle through the three size six seed beads going toward the crimp, headed down. There's that tail. And now you'll want to pick up three size ten seed beads. One eighth and three tens, and turn and go back down through those three. Danielle, you're calling that loop that you're making right now of beads um, one arm. Yeah, that would be that's one spiral arm, and each arm covers three of the size six beads. So in each one we build subsequently on top of that is going to cover three and three and they'll each sit one bead higher than the one before. That makes sense. And so what I'm going to do next is um, I slid down one new size six seed bead and I'm going to add the second arm. And so now come down through the one we added plus two more. So you see we're going to have, sorry, we're going to go through four, all four. 
our thread is currently exiting from the one we want it to be exiting, so we will still be covering three. I believe he was in the right spot there. We're losing your hands, Daniel. What's that? You're you're going off screen. Oh, thank you. Thank you for telling me that. Yeah, I was wondering why it's doing that. There we go. My tail got tangled. Sorry, guys. Okay. And so you see that one sitting just a little bit above. A little higher. A little higher. Gotcha. Okay. So I continued down through the one below. I'm going to turn and go through the first one we added. Go through the eight. And then if you can, cross over and go through that other eight in the other arm that we just built. There you go. The first st stitch is always going to be loose, and you can see even I'm, I'm constantly tightening it. There we go. Get that tail out of the way. Okay, and that's that extra step that is unusual for spiral is the linking of the two. So that I'll show you on the finished one. So that they they stay put next to each other. You see, every time we cross and connect an eight, I'm going back down and coming back up. So it's um, add, a, add a spiral arm, go back to bring that over here. Okay, so we just finished that one. Now we're going to go back through those two here and pick up three and eight and three. Move one bead down and then turn and go through four beads. So one, sorry guys, I'm off camera again. One, two, three, and four. Okay. And then we'll turn and go through the last spiral arm we added. through that eight. And it helps to kind of pinch them together like I'm doing. I hope that it doesn't make it hard to see, but it actually makes it a little tighter. And then crossing over into the other eight, continuing through all those tens. And then turn and go down through two. Okay, so picking up Three more. Oops. So we go. Slide down a new bead. And then turn and go through four beads. You see we're exiting the same one where this arm is exiting. The last arm we added. Because we're going to go up that arm. And through the eight, exit that eight. And then cross over and go into the eight of the other arm, the new one. See, it locks it down. And now I just need to go through those tens, all three of the tens. Danielle, how long did it take you to learn this stitch? Um, the original version, it was actually one of the first stitches I learned. The, the stitch spiral rope 
it was in, intrigued me because it's just the, the prettiest stitch ever and it was one that's made a little differently um the spiral loop i first learned went like this up the chain the reason i turned it to go down is so that we can loop back through that other arm so that we can link them that's the only reason we're going in that direction versus going you know making each arm go this way yes i'm happy to see you do this because the very first spiral I learned, I didn't do well with. This makes a whole lot more sense for me. I hope it does for everyone else as well. And if depending how we're doing on time, I can always redo this one more time. If, if uh, you think it you know, would help to see it one more time, I can do that. I think, uh, Laura, what, would you like to see it one more time or should we show it continuing in the demonstration? Why don't we go ahead and continue in the demonstration and then when we're done, we can circle back and if people want to continue watching it, we can keep going. I agree. Yeah. Okay, sounds great. Yeah, because that's, I feel like that's the trickiest part. And once you've got, once you've got four, then you're, that's it. It's the same thing over and over again for the whole length. And it's a nice one that you can just meditatively work on without paying super much attention after you get going. But that first stitch, it's moving around. It's hard to see. It's, I struggle with the first two always, even though I've made probably a dozen of these now. It's just those first few stitches. So keep going. That's what my whole point was. Just keep going if you feel like it's challenging. Okay. Um, switching to this one. Oops, sorry. Tangled with my samples here. Um, I was going to show um, putting the clasp on when you reach the link that you'd like for your necklace or bracelet. So this is, this is now you've done, I don't know how many arms on the sample that you have in front of you. Oh yeah, so this is um, about, about six and a half, beaded length of six and a half. And let's see, per inch, I would say it's 10 per inch, roughly. It, well, actually it, it's gonna be the same as the number of size six seed beads. And we know how many of those are per inch strong. Mm -hmm. So that would be a good way to figure out the measurement. And of course, when you're first building it, it doesn't shorten. So a lot of stitches when, you, when you're stitching along, they're getting shorter every time. This one doesn't do that. Whatever you string with those sixes, that's the length that's gonna stay. Hopefully that helps a, a little bit. Yes, I like that idea of knowing that it's probably 10 arms per inch. So six and a half inches would be about 65 yeah. times doing it, which is good. Yeah, that the, so the purple lanyard, the, that original, <laughs> that was a four day project, but I loved it. And the way it looked when it was done, was so neat. And it's just so flowy. I'm not sure if I mentioned, but for something that's so, I guess, thickly stitched, it moves, it really moves a lot. So movement, I feel like that with bead with beadwork, your biggest fear is that it's going to be well, I can't clasp it because it's not because it's too stiff to bend. So this works for bracelets because it's very movable. Um, okay, so this one, so you get to here, you finished, you've got it all done. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is weave in your thread. And so this is a stitch I had just completed. I'd looped around, and I come back down to. So I'm going to just continue down to the next, I'm thinking I'll go down three or four. And you're doing right now is preparing to complete one end. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to show how to clasp the other end and it's, it's really easy. So I'm exiting from this one and I go up this arm here. And so normally, you know, when we're doing it, we would cross. I'm not going to do that for this one because I want to have three weaving in sections and I've gone back three arms. So that makes, that makes sense a little bit. Um, so go through here. And so I'm turning and going back down to catch the next one. And the next one is here. I'm going to exit here. And 
And this part seems, seems like, you know, a lot, but it goes pretty fast and it's really worth doing. It makes the bees last longer. All right, and that was it here. On the last one. And all the way through all the beads. Okay, and I'm just going to go down oh, as far as I can, really. It's starting to get really tight because I did a lot of passes there. Let's see, there we go. Okay. Grab my flush cutters and I'm going to just trim this under tension. So I'm pushing down and pulling up. There we go. All done there. So now we just need a crimp, a crimp bead. And I've already got my clasp ready over here. I'm going to bring that down to meet the six bead. And go through the clasp here and back down through the crimp. And then I'm going to pull down to. Let's see. I'm going to see if I can get the beading wire through a bead or two here. And if I can't, then I'll just trim it higher, but I'm hoping I can get it through at least one. There we go. That just makes the crimp sit easier to crimp. I'm giving it some air there. Just like that. And there we go. So when you're crimping, actually I want to stop and mention, be careful not to crimp your size 10 seed beads. See how close he's sitting to the crimp? I think I might have just almost done that, but I stopped. And checked. And checked, and I'm glad I did. <laughs> yeah. Just want to make sure I don't do that. And it's... Um, it's close, but there we go. I cleared it. I'm going to move down a little bit. Okay. And closing the crimp. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing I did before and snip this under tension by pushing down and pulling up. There we go. And it's ready. You can put a charm on it. Danielle, people are very interested in your color choices. So the starting bead, the big bead, uh, shows the least. Was that, is that something you take into consideration when you're choosing the smaller beads that are going to basically spiral around it? Um, you know what I think? What I think what I'm doing is just going for something that I feel like has enough contrast that it'll stand out. At least that's what I was doing here. Because I wanted them to be different enough that everyone would see. One of the things, I loved this one, but you can't really make out the different size beads from the others. At least not on a video. And so that's, that drove my color choices for, for this one especially. So I just really yep. wanted it to be visible. And it's gray and gray is awesome. Yes. <laughs> Danielle, was, was there any sort of special tip to adding a lanyard if you were actually going to do the lanyard oh, problem? Yeah, so where I attached the, um, the lobster claw, you just put another jump ring. And if you want, you could put two jump rings and attach that to the badge clip. Yep. There would be, yeah, two jump rings on each side and then I think you could get away, get away with one of them if they're the, you know, the thicker ones. It's kind of up to you. Perfect. Yeah. Um, we have one question about what do you do if you just cannot thread the needle? Any oh, time? yeah. <laughs> so it's, um, yeah, it's tricky. It is tricky because, 
So this, what makes this thread so nice to stitch with also makes it really difficult to thread the needle, but it's worth it because then it's not loose on your needle when you're working. But something I do is, well, a couple things. You can take, you can take your fingernails and try this, or you can take the, let's see if I can find my pliers, something like this one. This is those flat chain nails. I don't know if you, can, you guys can see that. And I'll just kind of, I'm pulling pretty hard. Now look how flat that got. And then just orienting it so that it's kind of upright, I guess. And um, should go right through. And you see how it went, went through really easily where I flattened it and now it's, now there's resistance as I'm pulling it. That's going to help out a lot when you're stitching and your needle won't fly off when you pull. And this is one of those stitches where you're, you're pulling a little bit hard, especially those first few stitches to get them tight on the sample we just did. Um, that. You can see that those first few stitches, I was really pulling on those. Oh, they were stuck. Yeah, so it, it helps. And yeah, threading a needle is always the first, in person classes, the first 10 to 15 minutes is, has everybody got their needle threaded? You got your needle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we need a class on threading the needle. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody always tries and then, then you go, does anyone need help? No worries. <laughs> and so yeah, it's fun though. Um, I, we had a couple people ask to see the actual sample um, of the oh, yeah. finished lanyard. Danielle, I have your original. I don't know if you have a second copy of it. I have bracelets, but I don't have the original lanyard. Okay. Um, Debbie, I don't know if you can put me on the screen for a second, but I could definitely show everyone the original lanyard. So I'm just lifting up. Here we go. So it's absolutely stunning. For those of you who actually have to wear a name tag or something to get into a building and leave it on all day. You can imagine how much nicer this would be to wear as your name tag with a badge. So this is what Danielle has shown you how to do today. There it is. Perfect. Thank you, Debbie. Hey. Yeah, that was a that was a really fun one. Um, this is one that um, is a version of the same exact stitch, but I made it with size two beads. So they uh, everything scaled up. So instead of using tens, I'm using eights, and instead of using an eight here, that's a six, and so then the four is a two. Once you get one done, you should start experimenting with your bead stash. Yes, yeah, and see what works. And that's that's how these things that's how these things are come up with is someone was playing with what they had and seeing, well, can I make that work? Or can I make that take less time by making the seeds bigger? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, and this I actually am really smitten with this one. I, I tied a knot. This is just a regular overhand knot on one millimeter leather and strung the size twos left this end loose, you know, with the beads, it's long enough, the beads didn't fly off and then just did the stitch. Careful not to um, kind of shred the leather with the needle when you're going through, but that's really the only tricky part and rest, I mean, it, it takes maybe 35 minutes to make that. That's an awesome gift or something that you can sell. Oh yeah. And obviously people can color, color coordinate to school colors or favorite colors or horoscope colors. There's it's endless possibilities with your design. Yeah, completely. And the, um, these little um, attachments on the leather, I'm gonna show the products really quick. I just discovered these. I know I'm, I'm really late to that party, but these are really fun and they make, they make finishing so easy. I used to sit there and try to tie fancy knots and this was a really, nice way to finish it I thought and added a charm this is the leather I used perfect yeah 
Well, you've received many wonderful comments on the sidebar thanking you for an awesome PDF. Oh, thank you. So that's been great. And you've had a couple of requests on the sidebar that Millie's taken care of of people who missed um, seeing the PDFs from other classes. Oh, so okay. we've been putting them back up. Um, so Laura, from us at John Bede, we just want to make sure people know that um, Danielle has already, this is a Danielle's third class. And we have one more next week. And that's the one I'm most looking forward to. I think we all have our favorites. But next week is going to be a wonderful class. But if you've missed any of them, they're on the website at Michael's and ready to keep viewing. One thing that um, a couple of folks have noted that they've been asking for instructions and materials from previous classes. <laughs> Sorry, that's my dog. Um, we <laughs> We're actually working through a solution for that. So if, if there's something that you're looking for, go ahead and just shoot us a message on social media and we can send that right on over to you. Yeah. So this class yeah. will be available on michaels.com slash classes as of tomorrow. It's the same place that you register. Um, we do still have a little bit of time if, if we want to answer some questions. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And if you guys want, if there's time for, I can start another one if there was interest yeah, in that. Help. I would say the biggest hitch for everybody is, is getting from um, spot four to spot five in the instructions. Oh, so okay. I think the hardest part for them is to figure out the crossover when you go from the very first arm to the second arm. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's tricky. Um, so we came in through, I'll go back to this one. We came in through the, oh, I'm not even showing you guys the right screen here. Let me go back to my camera here. And if they get this stitch right, they can do everything. Yeah, this is the only part that, it's those first two rows and one of the things that's frustrating is they're loose. When you first start, they're loose and they're moving around. And so you saw, you know, I was kind of struggling to get those tightened, especially um, just that first two arms. So you come down through three, you pick up the pattern here, which is the, the three tens, the eight, and the three tens. And then you'll go back down. So you see we, I'll try to bring it next to it. We were here, and we're going back down through these two and exiting here. And then we picked up three tens and eight and three tens and turn and go down through all four. So you go down through all four here. It puts you in a position to go back up the first arm we made. And that's what you want to do. Head up through that first arm. Exit the eight. Cross over to the other eight. And then you continue up this way. And go back down two. So showing that here. Going back down one and two, exiting here and building the next arm. And for that one, you would need to slide a bead down. So there's always three. Your arms are always going to hug three of the sixes. And then you would come down one, two, three, four. You'll start to get the feeling of what you want to do is pick up that last arm every time. So that's why you're, you're going down one more bead than you would otherwise need to. Otherwise, you would just need to go down two. Add another arm. Go down. See, but I wanted to lock them, so that's why you're going all the way back down, linking up. I hope that that kind of makes sense. But well, it's the PDF good. is really good, and if if people have the opportunity or of pr printing it in color, they're going to see your lines really, really well. Um, and the only other thing that we did get a lot of questions on Danielle, um, people were really wanting to see what you did with that excess tail. Um, from the first one that you were doing. Oh, you mean to weave it in? Yes. Oh, yeah, I still have it. So, because they remembered that you have a seven inch tail and they weren't sure what you were doing with it. Yes, so this was my tail from earlier that I was using. Um, and, you know, pushing it out of the way was, it can get a little confusing. I always wish I could, like in the pattern, you can make the tail a different color. I wish I could do that for the real life demo. Um, okay, so I got that threaded. So you're basically putting that tail back on a needle. 
Yes, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to weave it back in. So I went ahead and threaded it. And let's see, I'm exiting from the third one, but I want to go through three spiral arms. So I'm going to go back down. Two more. A little, a little bit higher, Danielle. Thank oh, you. sorry. Yeah. Yep. I zoomed in a lot this time because I, I wanted you guys to be able to see, but then I move out so fast because the working area is as big as my hand. <laughs> but it's it's a lot. I feel like it's a lot better than last week. The vision, at least it seems that way on, on my screen. Yes. So I'm going up this um, first arm here. Or sorry, this it's the second arm, but I went down from where I was. And I'm just going to weave around. I'm going to weave up through that whole arm. What is the point of the weaving? Why are you doing that? Um, it's so that it won't loosen up, just locking in my thread. Uh -huh. It's um, you know, it's just a best practice. Someone asked in the last class about tying a knot. Sure, I mean, that's totally fine. Everybody has the style that they like. I, I think the reason I don't tie knots is I wanna be able to take it apart if I need to without having to cut a knot. And if you're working with this kind of thread, it's really easy to backtrack to where there's, for example, if it got broken, you could weave back, pull out just enough thread, weave in new thread, and without having a knot to worry about getting your needle through, you're never stuck. Perfect. So this is all I'm doing is I'm just tracing my path through each of these arms and then I'm going down and getting the next arm. So the next arm you see it's exiting here. So I'm going to bring my needle through there. And by doing this, you won't have to have a knot. Your thread is now safe. Yeah, because it's it's been going through, I went through three arms now once I'm finished with this one. And it'll be pretty tight after that. So once you've gone through that last one, just kind of push the needle as far down as you can get it to go. In this case, I can get it to go to the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then just trim it. See, I'm putting weight on the tool and I'm pulling really hard with the thread and just trimming it. Yeah, that's all. Thank you. Sure. That, that, those were the two most asked questions. Again, you're getting many wonderful comments um, for your PDF and it being so helpful. Oh, People yeah. I'm so glad. Forward to trying this for sure. And you just got, Barbara just said you're not not using a knot was brilliant. So that's oh, really nice. Thank you. Thanks. I think we're good now, Laura. All right. Yeah, I think that was good. I actually learned a lot over here. I'm sitting here trying to focus in on you and, and you have a lot of really good techniques. And I think we all really enjoy the way that you teach and, and your patience and that you take it slow and kind of help us guide through that. So thank you very much. I hope everyone enjoyed the class tonight. This class will be posted on a video on mypulse.com slash classes as of tomorrow. Um, like we mentioned, there is another class the same, um, same day and time next week for our last project for, um, for John B. And then we will um, start up again in August. So we're really excited. There's a good variety of classes. We encourage you to keep coming back and trying new things. They're all free. They're all fun. And we hope you all learned something tonight. So enjoy your evening and, and thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.